Good morning and welcome to episode 53, or what I'm calling episode one of season two, but I've been told I'm not allowed to call it that. Aaron wants the big numbers. So uh, episode 53 of Ask the Accountant, we are here as ever on a Monday morning at half eight to say hello to everybody. Uh, If you are tuning in live, why not tune in and stick your comments in the comments boxes on whatever social media platform you are watching us on because we are all, all of them. Um, so, as ever, here today is Mr. Aaron Patrick. Aaron, how are you? You made it home after Friday's debacle. Yes, just, just. So, uh, what's the weather like your end? We've not had weather watch for a while. What's it, what's it then? Um, you can't really see much, but it's blue skies, cloud. Well, not even much cloud, to be fair. Blue skies and sunshine. Bloody cold. But we've had this for the last... 36 hours. Really? So, okay. Yeah. So if I put it that on, on all our social media channels at the moment in our local area, people are on canoes floating through um, car parks just admiring damaged vehicles. <laughs> that seems to be a trend on ours at the moment. Yeah, we, we're a little bit sodden down here in the, in the Midlands. Um, so much so that I went to to London on Friday to go to QuickBooks, as the account, as the expert is back. So I'm very, very excited about that. So we're well, allowed to, to say that. Are we allowed to announce that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's official. Cool. It's all official. All right, that's, a, that's great news that he's come back. Yeah, as the expert is back, and I'm so excited. I couldn't be more happy for that. Um, but during that time there, it was brilliant. We're filming that. Went to go home. My train was cancelled. I thought, oh well. One train was a problem with one train, you know, happens every now and again, right? I'll just jump on the next one, no problem whatsoever. Um, no, every train was cancelled to Derby. <laughs> well, every train was cancelled to the Midlands, so yeah. Um, after jumping between m- multiple trains and final taxi thing, there it basically was our story to Reading in reverse, so yeah, it was uh, yeah. Fun times on the train, and they want thing is, though, like, it wasn't the train's fault. Like, there's no, I can't complain at trains, I can't complain to people. Like, at the end of the day, we're underwater, but they, you know, there's this big push that they want us to use trains, they want us to use trains more. But every time, I, I've just had problem after problem after problem at the moment, so yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? it's a tricky one. Yeah, I mean, my mother in law went up to um Inverurie, which is north of Aberdeen. Uh, to see some f- old friends. Um, she went up Thursday, was meant to come back Saturday, finally got here, got home about half five yesterday. Like, half just yesterday. flooding all over the place. Roads closed because of uh, landslips and trees falling down. And, yeah, yeah. So hopefully none of our listeners are too heavily impacted by any of that. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, before we go on to all the other stuff we want to talk about, let's talk about QuickBooks, Ask the Expert, because that's kind of how you and I met. So that that's really exciting. That, that I mean, we've known it's been coming back for a while, but we can now talk about it. So QuickBooks, Ask the Expert was a morning podcast, five days a week, uh, for video, Facebook, everywhere, uh, back during COVID. It was QuickBooks' immediate response to COVID and to supporting small businesses. They got people like myself and Aaron, uh, Ariona, uh, various others, and then as well as accounting experts, they got non-accounting experts. So like uh, Meryl, from uh, the, who does all the legal stuff. Um, we've got all sorts of marketing people. We had some... Um, former winners of The Apprentice on. like We had a huge array of people um, all in there, all sharing insights and advice, uh, explaining the latest news from Downing Street, what those new grants and stuff meant. And it was absolutely fantastic to do that amazing resource and be part of that journey. Um, Everyone just volunteered their time. Some of us were talking about Furlong. Furlong, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um. But yeah, it was just amazing to volunteer our time to a project like that, which we knew was helping so many small businesses. It was multiple award nominated. I want to say winning as well. Yeah. Um, so it was yeah, it was a very well received. Yeah. Uh, so very well received project. After COVID, 
it got put to bed a bit. Um, it, you know, they reduced the amount of frequency and stuff, and then it, it's not really happened for about a year. No. So what's the plan? What's the focus of Ask QuickBooks Ask the Expert going forwards? So the new style of it is in person, which is cool. So again, as you've yeah. mentioned before, didn't do that during COVID. Yeah, exactly. It was purely, uh, literally, from our bedrooms, wasn't it? It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> especially that pilot. If you ever go back, you ever look at the pilot episode. Literally, I think I had a, had a load of uh, washings done in the back of uh, one of the shots. So <laughs> our times have changed. Exactly, exactly. Um, but no, it's all in person now, and the idea is that. Um, there'll be a rotating guests and rotating um, hosts, I believe. But we've, we've shot the first three episodes, so we'll come out monthly. Um, and we go and we basically interview. It is, they've definitely, um, and that they'll be happy for, to admit this, they've definitely taken some some of our cues from um, We Have Cool Friends. They like that vibe. They wanted that sort of energy and that sort of, you know, conversational. Um, so they've kind of taken that, that as a as a their own way of looking at it and then then they put their own spin on it which is cool um so yeah it's all in person it's all at quickbooks hq first three episodes included uh rapinda is episode number one so that'll be a nice one to talk about how quickbooks and what's happened there and everything else that goes forward then we had a sole trader that brought in and then we've got a marketing expert as well that came on board as well i won't ruin who those are like um that will leave them as a, a surprise but yeah it was a brilliant uh, day of filming and i'm really looking forward to uh, to go and push that live because is that still targeting small businesses or are they niching it back down to supporting accounting and bookkeeping firms trying to be both yeah trying to be both right. at the same time so yeah which i'm you know i'm, I'm all up for and i think it's a a nice little one i think you know the first three episodes will probably be more focused at accountants just by well Episode one and three will be focused more accountants, but yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, looking at both of them. So yeah, I'm just glad that it's back. You know, kind of felt like it's pilot episodes again and we were kind of finding the feet and everything else. So yeah, looking forward to, to where that goes. And it's needed in this industry, right? Like when you can look at what the competitors are doing, you know, they, they've got their own little shows and stuff. It's kind of, it's cool to see that back and, you know, Cool to see that that format's making a return. So really, really excited for that to go live. Definitely very happy to see that back and fond memories of early mornings and sound checks and speed checks and everything else that we used to have to do for uh, the team that were running those. So, yeah, that was... Uh, Harry was there, who was the person doing the actual... Fantastic. Yeah, so it was a nice little full circle of okay yeah. this is where it started this was the virtual and it's kind of where yeah. we picked up from isn't it where the, where that ended we picked up um with ask yeah. the accountant so <laughs> the reason it's called ask the accountant <laughs> uh there's a reason you've introduced it wrong so many times yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> the amount of times during that that i was going and welcome to ask the accountant nope nope <laughs> restart <laughs> Uh, that will teach you no for worry. moonlighting. I do it on both sides. <laughs> you know, I'm inconsistent. No worry. Brilliant. So yeah, no, really happy to see that back because uh, yeah, because that's where we kind of met properly and got the ideas from. So exactly. absolutely right. fantastic. Right, let's go through the comments before we move on to our first topics or any further topics. So we've got good morning to Paul. Good morning, Louise. Good morning, Kirsty. Good morning, James Tax. Uh, Da, da, da. Good morning, good morning. Natasha Cheryl is saying it's foggy in South Yorkshire. Um, Paul has said it certainly helped me during the pandemic with the Ask the, Ask the Expert. Oh, I nearly did it there. <laughs> um, he reckons that's the reason he's becoming addicted to watching us every Monday morning. Okay, I, I'm not sure you can class Ask the Expert as a gateway to us <laughs> uh, and an addiction but okay and good morning to paul as well of course throughout the episode guys if you are watching live then stick your comments in and let us know your thoughts on all the topics we're covering um this is going to be the final week for you to put in your suggestions for the new title for this very episode or this very series so every monday morning we go live with ask the accountant but what we have got is some fantastic other brands. So Ask the Accountant, We've Got Cool Friends. Ask the Accountant, pit, Podcast Pit Stop. Ask the Accountant, Gridwalk. 
we've got all these great brands. We feel this one needs a slight rename. So as the accountant will always be the overarching brand, but we want to name this uh, like we have the grid walk and stuff. So people know what they're coming, they're tuning into. So if you've got any suggestions uh, that you haven't put in already, put them into the comments. We are collating them all and there will be a poll going out. Everybody loves a good poll, bit of uh, social media interaction. So we'll be putting polls out across LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube for you to choose your vote for your favorite one. Um, and of course, the winner wins a complete set of laminated Top Trump Season 1 cards. There's Aaron quickly getting his cards ready. It's all there, sat there, ready to go. And and a taxi. Um, <laughs> and a blank taxi receipt. Blank You'd put the exp expense in you want. <laughs> that was a whole different matter. Um, so, yeah, so if you've got any suggestions for names that you've not already put in, please stick them in the comments, and we will collate them all and do a poll in the coming weeks. But this is the last week for you to stick them in. Uh, <coughs> we need to send producer Lizzie go through the comments to find them all now. Yeah, um, because ideally, for our first episode in November, we want to have... A new branding sort of definitely do definitely do um especially since i'll be on location for that episode it's gonna be interesting yeah that'll be a, a spicy episode <laughs> could be quite hot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hotter than it is here by about 20 odd degrees um, if you've got enough alcohol in it maybe that's the time to find out some real truths <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's your opinion on xyz well you well, let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, lads. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, as we embark onto year two of Ask the Accountant, blank, because we don't know what we're calling it yet, yeah. um, we wanted to just thank everyone who listens and watches us because in year one, we surpassed 30,000 watches and listens. Now, that's not 30,000 impressions. That impressions number is far, far, far higher. Um, Aaron's got... Oh, there we go. Fireworks going. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, 30,000 times our videos have been watched and our podcasts have been listened to or our live streams have been watched and tuned into. So thank you very much to everybody over the last year that has done that. Um and listen to us and keeps coming back to listen to us you poor poor people i don't know why you keep coming back i mean i only put you on to put for, to fall asleep at night when i can't sleep <laughs> but uh yeah thirty thousand listens and watches aaron not bad for one year is it not bad at all are you gonna put the cheer in this uh... oh hang on where's the button oh yeah i do this <laughs> no, 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 no. There we yeah. go. Yeah, no. year in, we still aren't professional enough to do the tears <laughs> and the confetti at the same time. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. And again, we've said this a few times, and we'll just reiterate the fact that we just had an idea one day at Accountex, ran a pint, and here we are. And it's yeah, it's really, really humbling to kind of think about how many um, listens and stuff we had in that first year. And what it gives us is that opportunity to have a springboard, right? That we can then go off and do some really interesting ideas that we've got. I think we we you know we've come up with some great ideas, these being some of them. Um, but with that sort of you know listenership and that sort of community gives us an opportunity to keep pushing that and going forward. So yeah, watch this space. We've got some great ideas in the pipeline. We have, we certainly have. It's gonna be an exciting year too. Um, okay, so let's crack on with the news um I, i'm gonna mix this up a bit compared to the order go for it your mates with the guys at bright and accountancy manager aaron well you were until about two weeks ago <laughs> did your leaving accountancy manager result in kevin the ceo getting sacked oh now there's a there's a there's a, a thing here. i don't know i mean I think we were saying off, off air, weren't we? The most poignant part about this was how quiet it was. Like, Yeah. So for the, anyone that's not seen it, Bright, who brought, who've got Bright Pay, um, BTC, Bright Propose, 
Bright Company's house, whatever they were calling that, and accountancy manager. Um, I've probably missed something there, but and yeah. oh, surf the bookkeeping oh, yeah. tool in a, in Ireland or wherever it is. Um, for, for those that aren't aware, Bright have replaced their CEO. So Kevin was with Bright. He went from free agent to accountancy manager. And in the acquisition from accountancy manager, he took over as the CEO for Bright. He seems to have just disappeared um, very, very quickly and quietly. 22? Around that time, wasn't it? it was, yeah. It was when we were at, um, at Accounting Web, wasn't it? That, that yeah. Yeah. 20, 21, 22. It was probably the end of 21, I think. Okay, okay, okay. He got brought in. Because that was his first event, was Accounting Web, the first one. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, Bright have just announced a, the the appointment of a new CEO. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> What's happened to the last one? Um, no announcement whatsoever about Kevin, whether he's retiring, moving on to Projects News, absolutely nothing which is normally means something's happened or someone's not performing like in the corporate world but um do we know what the pedigree of the new ceo is like aaron do we do we know what this might symbolize because normally when you get a new ceo like this it normally symbolizes maybe a change in direction or a refocus on something i know their refocus is this new one bright initiative i think they call it basically the one ecosystem to all the more sort of idea so I, I kind of I kind of see that maybe because one of the things I I praised Bright for at the very beginning, um, or after the AM um the accounting manager acquisition was that they were basically pushing a lot of people from accounting manager into higher roles because accounting manager was their, you know, was their best performing product in terms of kind of external looking out, in terms of you know what they were doing and and innovations and all that sort of stuff so it made sense that when bright acquired and then to not only acquire the tech but also the clever people behind it and that's where uh, kevin came from wasn't it that's where we've got various people who've gone up through the ranks and they've all got really high high um, leadership roles in bright and for me that was quite humbling it was a you know it was always a great little love story sort of idea you know that sort of idea where it was this great story where accounting manager gets acquired and not just stripped like certain people out there do you know certain other organizations would acquire and strip and and mutilate um but in this case it was acquire and actually prosper and push and and, and bring them up to I me mean, it just feels like yeah it feels like this is a whole new way of of moving forward and it's a strange one because I, I thought there was a nice little fit there. It felt like it was a match made in heaven from outside looking in. Clearly it wasn't like that's you know, naive of me to say that looking back, but it felt like they're right. Like it was, it was all going quite well. I know they've had their problems in terms of accounting manager and stuff. And I've, I've documented it on the show before. Um, but I believe that that was more of a, you know, just, just them trying to like keep everyone happy sort of thing, you know, too many, too many, you know, uh, you know, too many people to look after at any one point as they were doing, doing the transition or whatever it was going to be. I didn't think that it was as problematic as it must have been if they had this very quiet change of the guard. And um, there's been other promotions as well, which is good to see. So it looks like there's been a whole change of leadership by the looks of it. So yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what goes forward. Is this them thinking that maybe it's time to stop acquiring just work on what they've got and stay the ship if, if it's this one bright initiative is what's going forward that possibly going to be the way what do you think yeah it, it does seem odd that there's been a change so covertly and to just have a but then to release a press conference a press statement uh about the new ceo it <coughs> yeah it, it seems a bit odd but um you know, when I go back to my corporate days back in before my current life, the only time that kind of thing happened was ever when someone had been let go, encouraged out the door and not to return, or had been a naughty boy or girl and got themselves into a bit of trouble. So I can't believe Kevin would have, you know, done anything like that. I do think it's probably a change of strategy, but I don't know how friendly and hospitably it was done. Um, but yeah, like 
as you say, it seems to have reverberated into a, a few changes of leadership roles. Um, so, yeah, it will be interesting to see what the new focus is from Bright. Because as you say, they've got all these options. And we're now, you know, they, they do need to plug it all into that one product concept. Um, so, yeah, maybe this new leadership team is going to be more, has got more of a skill set to do, achieve that and to roll that out which makes yeah. sense to then make those changes. I do feel like the only thing they're missing is a proper, as we now have to call it, FMS solution, bookkeeping solution, whatever whatever, whatever the phrase is going to be going forward. But they they are missing. I know they've got Surf, which is, you know, seems like it's a, a fantastic product, but it does seem like it's very, well, it's not for the UK market, right? Like it's not built for that. And I don't know if that's an easy, quick change to move it over. So I wonder... Yeah is you know is their new focus going to be more based on that i mean the person coming in in fairness you know i've just done a quick google is you know a very tech fo focused one worked with um a, a consulting firm called micro focus and worked with dell and ibm so he seems to have pedigree in you know tech fintech and everything else so yeah maybe maybe this is the right they've, they've kind of acquired 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 and now it's time to just get that ecosystem up and running. So, yeah. I mean, we've seen it, haven't we? Because they've had their um, uh, Bright Propose, which was internally built from the ground up. Yep. The first thing they've built for a long, long time, really, apart from accounting manager, because the rest have all been acquisitions. I suppose Bright Pay was um, built, yeah. in, not, wasn't it, back in the day? But yeah. It's... And Bright Pay Cloud, that was internally built. <laughs> yeah. Whether you want to claim to that or not is a different matter. But... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, moving swiftly on. Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, they need it, right? And and we've said it before. I feel like Bright have an opportunity, if done right, to be able to take on the likes of Iris and and be that full ecosystem. And now QuickBooks yep. into it with their ecosystem. Like that's what they want to do, right? They want to become that next big ecosystem for accountants. So, yeah. Hopefully, this is a good move for them. Fingers crossed for them. They definitely need a shot in the in the arm, don't they? They they need something to take push them to that next level. Maybe this is the the right way for them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, speaking of acquisitions, um, Comma. Does anyone remember who Comma was? Uh, so, Comma was a uh, bulk payment platform that just never really got traction in the UK. They couldn't decide on their pricing point or their pricing model for that matter. They couldn't get into do integrations easily with the likes of QuickBooks Zero, et cetera. I mean, they were in Employment Hero for a bit, but Employment Hero then basically cancelled them, um, yeah. Yeah, saying it, it wasn't working for anybody. Uh, well, for the partnership, the partnership wasn't working for either side of the partnership. So. Um, but last week, it was announced that Comma will be brought to an end uh, as of the 1st of November. Comma is no more. So Comma got, Comma got acquired um, earlier this year, I want to say. Um, but they've obviously decided it's still, there's nothing, either they've taken the technology and built it into the acquirer's own tech stack, or they've decided actually, there's not much we can do with this. We're just going to shut it down yeah. and write it off. Um, so I, within an hour of uh, this news breaking, I had uh, one of our peers on the LinkedIn messaging saying, how good's Apron? Can it replace Comma? It's like, oh, yes, it can. So, you know, anyone that's got Comma or has still got a few clients lagging around on Comma, you know, from the 1st of November, it will be turned off. Um, and if anyone's looking for a solution to replace it, I highly recommend Apron. Um, fantastic team, very quick and responsive to, with feedback and developing on the back of that feedback. They've got a fantastic bill payment and payroll payment solution out there already. Very well tested, very well uh, used. And they're bringing out Snap, as we discussed last week as well. So I think they're going to become an integral part of many people's tech stacks. Um, 
So yeah, so if you're using comma and you're looking for a replacement, apron would be my recommendation. Any thoughts or insights on this one, Aaron? Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because they, they they were, or they seem to be bringing something to the table. The fact that they got in, in that employment hero um, uh, opportunity there and that they had that. That's where I found them anyway, or at least. Yeah, were. you know what my concern is here is comma talk the talk. Yeah. But they never really walked the walk. But they convinced people like Employment Hero to do an integration. A lot of time and resources and money got poured into building that integration. Who else has got the integration at the moment? Is it Modular? Who else is it? Modular or Telleroo? It might be Telleroo then, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's one of them, right? Because we're always restricted by who was those. Yeah. But then, comma, struggling shall we say, and bringing very little to the party in the form of new users for Employment Hero, it's got to sour the opinions of the leadership team somewhere. And they kind of go, "Mm, yeah, we've done an integration before and it didn't go well. So it puts them off further integrations in the future. Yeah. So people like Comma coming along, talking the talk and getting the integrations in place whether working or not, different matter, whether they brought anything to the party in the form of new leads, as it were, for employment hero, different matter. But by by them not delivering and then shutting down, it kind of sours the, the appetite for more integrations and investing more time and money into building integrations out collaboratively with others. I agree. But, you, I mean, you're part of a development team now, right? You've got client yep. engagement. What point does someone like Client Engager, you know, Employment Hero? I know it's very different budgets here, but you know, at what point do you go? Well, instead of doing these bespoke integrations, we look at some sort of public-facing SDK, like QuickBooks has, you know, with the App yep. Store, like Zero have, and everything else. I mean, they have their own problems. Don't get me wrong. I mean, QuickBooks is will be the first to say that they've not updated their SDK in a long, long time, which has caused us no end of issues. But when... when zero don't I'm... relinquish control because you have to apply for certification exactly. and only 25 of your users can use it until they've certified you, which can take up to three months. And potentially a, a, a revenue split involved in that as well. There's yep. all sorts of... Yeah. There's a whole different issue, right? But at what point do we... Do companies go, right, well... Like you said, these resources of having to, to pre- prevent us from releasing X, Y, Z feature because we're, we're going to work with this partner to build up this partnership and go from there. At what point is that tipping point to go, you know what, let's just give some SDKs out, uh, some um, a, uh, public APIs out there for a, an SDK and let's just let's just push it from there. You know, what's that tipping point, do you think? Because Employment Heroes clearly not felt like they're at that point, which is strange okay because it felt like you know they're a big enough company to to have that we'll, we'll come to why in a moment but that you know they seem to have the resources there um i'm not saying it's the right time for client engager but you know you've clearly got to the point where that's not the right time for you either so when is that because what happens is you have the accounting manager's story where they make this big song and dance about them having a relationship with uh, go proposal and it felt like that was a match made in heaven clearly got me excited because i i went back to go proposal for the first time in two three years or whatever it was at that point so i jumped on the bandwagon there so their resources at this point seemed like it was a worthwhile investment to have that partnership going and then a couple of years down the line they release a bright proposal and they just have to kill it so all of that resource has now been wasted on both sides right because it's now yeah. It, you know it's irrelevant so at what point is it let's not put the resources into individual partnership but let's put the resources into a open api ecosystem but have you had those conversations at client engager or we haven't yet as you say we're at a very different part of the journey um we're still very focused on apis now we are we are trying to open doors and talk to people who we want apis with whether they're as willing to sit down around the table or not is a very different matter. Um, so, you know, when we're looking at our APIs, though, we we do try and 
put stats and statistics behind it. So we can turn around to someone we might be looking to pair up with and say, look, we know how successful these APIs are with our other partners. That this is the gen this is the, the lead generation we're creating by just you plugging into us. Yeah. This is the interest we're creating by you just plugging into us. Um, so there is value to be that had there. But I don't think uh, in the comma employment hero scenario, I think comma were hoping for the instead of their comma producing opportunities for employment hero, I think employment they were hoping employment hero integration was going to create them opportunities and it didn't. Um for whatever reason that is, whether it was the pricing model, the functionality, who knows. But yeah, it's it's a tough one because in theory we could just build out an open API. But to do that, you need to be fairly happy that everything we're going to do going forward isn't going to interrupt that OP API. Because at the moment, we're doing such fundamental changes to our foundations that it would knock the API out every time and it would need to be rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's finding that point in the journey when you're happy to do it. Yeah, you guys are at that part of your, your progression where actually you need to be really careful of who you partner with, right? You've yeah. got to be very, very careful. And, you know, there's got to be a mutual benefit for both part partners. But I just, I wonder what that tipping point is. Like, again, if employment here hasn't reached that one. So, Commerce spent all this resources and employment spent resources, and now both from a burn, right? Like, I don't expect employment hero to jump at the chance to go with anyone. We, we've been pushing for X, Y, and Z to partner with them, right? And that's yeah. doesn't seem to be getting anywhere because of, by looks of it, it's because of situations like this where they've been burnt yeah. in the path. I just wonder what what you believe that that tipping point must be where you go right. Well, let's. I think stop. it's a and let's just make it open to anyone yeah there's got i think there's a huge amount of investment in resources and financially to build that and you've got to be confident that it's not going to break your system um but also it depends on your attitude towards partnerships like do they want to try and monetize that partnership because if they do, then they don't want to just have an API. Because yeah. if anyone can just plug in them. But it's also, we had a discussion with a software vendor a couple of weeks ago about the journey um, and the ownership of that journey. And they wanted to be able to power features either themselves or with partners that they had control of that journey. Because it ultimately, their worry was, this is our customer that we're exposing to software X, Y, Z. We want to make sure that it's safe, secure, and meets minimum standards of and expectations of functionality. And, and I suppose also they're, they're able to support, right? Like yes. if it's a fundamental piece of functionality and it goes wrong, then the first person that that customer is going to go isn't going to be xyz the partners where it's going to be the software they're currently using right yeah exactly so there's a branding there's a brand reputational issue there there's a um, trust issue there so yeah it is very convoluted it's not a quick it's not a black and white yes no and i can also when you look at it like that you can understand why softwares are not overly keen to have apis at times uh, yeah, you know, this leads into a conversation you and I have been having for months, and we've spoke about on this uh, podcast for months. And accounting web have been covering in the last couple of weeks of the lack of integrations between different softwares. It's not just a plug and go. It's uh, if that goes wrong, what's the reputational damage? What's the functional damage to the other softwares? Um, so yeah, it's it's a very fine balancing act. I don't know the answer to it at the moment. Yeah, it'd be interesting, won't it? If, if this, because commas, like, yeah, it, that story has been and gone, but it's what else happens. I think that's the overriding conversation, isn't it? It's yeah. What happens now? You know, is this why people haven't jumped? Like, we, we've already shouted about them already. Apron is one we, we push and push, yeah. but doesn't seem to be any major integrations at the moment. Now, either that's 
because they internally don't want the integrations, they're not been actively pushing for them, or be, because people are a bit scared of, well, do we put an investment into a, a new startup that might not be here in X amount of time? We we don't believe that with April and one bit, but that could be part and parcel of the conversation, right? Of, yeah. well, do do you want another comma on our hands? And, and that's yeah. going to be a net, isn't it? I suppose my overriding message to these software providers that are being burnt, for want of a better term, is don't close your doors because of one problem. Yeah. But review your internal processes of and re review how you assess who you will and won't work with. Improve and make that more, strengthen that process by all means. But don't just close your doors just because one has gone wrong. Um. But yeah, it's it's a shame that you know comma because I think you and I looked at comma back in twenty one twenty two like it was they talked the talk but they just never seemed to get anywhere yeah um, and I would from a software developer's point of view I'd want to see results before I did an integration um, so yeah interesting one definitely inter i think comma were just too focused on investment and that ac the an acquisition in the long run like they were trying to look good to a board of venture investors and stuff and i don't know that it went overly well um just before we move on like with this i feel like it's a pain point us accountants have had for long enough right it is yep. a painful part of a service we've always wanted to offer right like yep. it makes sense if we could offer it and there's so many barriers to entry for us to to help our clients make payments you know and, and especially to employees it's a, a huge area right a huge pain point i wonder why though there's been so many opportunities to have these integrations why you know the likes of if you go through all of them bright pay sage all of them like sage pay and 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 they, they just, there's a reluctance for this. Do you think, and this is tinfoil hat time, do you think a lot of them are going, let's not spend this time in investing in integrations. They seem to have a model that works, so let's replicate that model. Yeah, I think there's a certain degree of it is, can we do it ourselves? Yeah. Like, would that get a better return on investment than integrating into them? Like... You know, at Client Engager, we're very clear that we don't want to be uh, building out our own AML processes. Like we, not when you've got someone like Zama who is completely yeah. smashing it at the moment. Yeah. You know, we want the ability to help our clients capture better bank quality, better quality bank data. We don't want to have to build all that at our, ourselves. So we partner with Armalytics. So, yeah, I think. But I don't, I don't think that's overly common in the software market. People are looking at going, oh, I could probably build that functionality ourselves and get a better return on investment. Yeah, that's something yeah. we could sell. Like that's a bolt on we could sell. I'm not convinced that's true. Yeah, and I don't. I question how many times that conversation's had versus how many times it actually they actually deliver on it, and successfully. Should I add? <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? I, I just hope this isn't a closed door scenario, like you said. Because I mean, we don't help the matter with this fact that, well, I personally have been telling everyone that going forward with AI, then actually instead of having lots and lots of integrations and having this best in class in every solution, then actually we might be better off having just one closed shop, one. You know, one ecosystem to rule them all, which is what Bright's trying to build, right? Because then AI could be more useful between it, and that's quite dangerous for innovation, isn't it? If if we all went back to our own little ecosystems and we're all quite happy in there, then the likes of Apron and the likes of Comma and all them like innovators, they'll be dead in the water as soon as they get released, won't they? It depends how you build the integrations, because so if you look at Client Engager and Zama, right? Zama's got all the data. But we're pulling through summary data into Client Engager. Yeah. So if we were you, to have an AI tool, two-way integration, yeah. right? So if we were to have an AI tool in Client Engager, for example, we'd still have enough data coming through from the partner product 
to be able to make use of it. So just because it's there's two products there doesn't mean the AI couldn't see it. It would depend on the two way collaboration of how you build it, yeah, and where the data is stored and where it's coming from. So, you know, in theory, I could go, "Hey, whatever, show me the latest bank fetch or latest bank transaction report for client ABCD Limited in Client Engager." Now, in theory, that's been provided by Armalytics, but because of the way we've built that integration, it's stored in Client Engager as well. So, actually, we can we can request that information. So. It depends on the openness of the APIs. If yeah. the person, if they built it with where it's a two-way sync rather than a one-way thing, then it doesn't have to be an all-in-one shop for an AI to be a powerful tool. But it does require collaboration. Yeah, which then limits the, and 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 it's definitely the right way for client engagement because you guys are going out there, you're doing your due diligence, and you're picking what you believe is best in class in category A, category B, and category C. But that means that that's limit, limiting the user to those individual ones, right? Yep. Whereas most of these open API conversations we're talking about, if at bigger scale, like Employment Hero, for example, and QuickBooks, you're going to want choice. You, you want to have that opportunity to plug right. X, Y, and Z in, right? And then that surely limits the amount that you could get through AI. There's no reason why Stream Connect can't plug into client engager instead of analytics there's no yeah. reason why firm check can't plug into client engager instead of zama they've just not want they've not approached us for that conversation yeah and why you know we've got a solution we don't need to approach them for that you know yeah. we've not got clients uh, users saying really want this one as well so whilst there's no user demand and we've got a solution we're not going to go out there and find ourselves more work now, if they came to us and said, we want to plug in, we'll have that conversation. That's not an issue. There's no exclusivity deals in place or anything like that. You know, we've not ring-fenced the pay now button to be powered by a certain software vendor for five years or anything daft like that. We have just built into people that were willing to talk to us at the early stages. Yeah, yeah. So there's no reason why we can't have APIs to five-plus AML tools to five plus payment tools to five plus um, bank fetch tools, whatever it is, you know, it can be done, but we've got a solution. Our users are using it. If those, it's so it's up to those vendors to come to us. We're not going to go out and create work, work for ourselves with APIs that no one's asking for. So yeah, it, I suppose our philosophy is somewhat different to a lot, um, but it takes two to tango. Yeah, don't expect to be asked to dance if you don't stand up and go looking for a dance. I think yeah. that's a. No, is that an? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I've. I've I think I've used I think, it in there. Basically, it's a full stop on the, the comma, isn't it? Comma conversation. All right, Tom Herbert, calm down. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, just quickly going through the comments. Da, 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 da. So, uh, Paul Keating asked the accountant trending now like that. Uh, we will add that to the list. Good morning to Sue. Let's add a exclamation mark. Ask the accountant trending now. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Paul says MTD Itza could bring a lot more integrations for client engager and similar products, I imagine. You know what, though, Paul? I don't think it will. I think the only integrations it's going to bring is HMRC because <laughs> MTD Itza is not changing the attitude of the software vendors. Yeah. Like, it's just, if anything, well, it makes me think I'll do something myself. It's made people like QuickBooks go and look at practice management, haven't they? Yeah. Now. We can argue if they did the right, if they've made the right practice management yet, but they that's the whole point of them, right? They want to support accountants in supporting their clients. So that's that's the change that's happened, right? It's that yep. you've got a lot of work on your plate to do it, but I think you're right. I think HMRC need to open up and have a, a robust API integration 
for any practice management solution to have any hope of being able to deliver yep. NTD. Well, what, you know, like, look at Dext. In theory, they could have built out more links to more bookkeeping providers, uh, FMS systems, because of MTD Itza. They built their own MTD Itza thing, solution, a strong word solution, but um, they brought their own tool. Uh, even the word tools implies it's useful. Um, <laughs> they brought something to the market yeah. <laughs> because they decided instead of integrating further, which to be fair, they've got a wide amount of integrations already. But I think software vendors are looking at MTD. It's are going, right, how can this give us a bigger cut of the pie? And it's not through APIs and integrations in their opinions. So, yeah, I'm not convinced MTD it's is going to bring in any further integrations at all, if I'm honest, because, you know, a practice management, yeah, we'll, we'll link to MTD, it's a um, HMRC and do all of that. But it's not a high barrier to entry. Just that means, you know, like if tax calc or KPM or anyone else decide we need that HMRC information, we best go, how are we going to get it? They're not going to go, oh, we'll get it through client engage or accountancy manager who have already got the links. They'll go, right, we'll link to HMRC ourselves. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, I don't think it's creating any barrier to entry whatsoever. So I don't think it's going to create any further integrations necessarily that are directly responsible because of MTD. It's a... And arguably, why hasn't these integrations already been there? For, we're, we're, we're talking about MTD, it's a, but MTD BAT should already yeah. be, and that's the solution, right? Yeah. Like, that's what we should be pushing for. Why, why isn't it an easy API that any accounting you know, practice management solution can figure out if you've got an overdue VAT return or not? Uh, uh, technically, it is. No one's just, just no one's done it. Okay, fair enough. But like, there's an MTD, it's a, a MTD VAT API for agent authorization, et cetera. It's already there. No one's plugged into it. But watch this space because Client Engage is about to plug into it next month. So, but, but, but in theory, though, like, again, one of your biggest USPs is that idea that you can't complete a task if you filed a set of accounts unless the company's house tell you you have, right? Like yeah. that's been since day one. But why is that not available through HMRC? Because of HMRC, that's the problem. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's and, just not. But then why would HMRC be inclined to have that feature in their API? when no other practice management uses the company's house one like we do. True, true. Like, if that was such a cool feature, then every practice management software would have that feature. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, anyway, moving on. Otherwise, this could go downhill pretty rapidly. Um, you, know you said we're not going to cover our topics. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um... Employment Hero have just been valued at two billion pounds in their latest raising of so it's round F raising two billion pounds. <laughs> uh, so Employment Hero have just successfully closed their round F fundraising, um, and they have raised two hundred sixty-three million pounds. Not a bad little little piggy bank to run a business off, is it? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would argue that shows that investors believe employment here are moving on the right tracks across all their markets globally. Um, and what they were, what they're doing is going to be huge success. Um, so yeah, congratulations to employment hero on that. Aaron, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, it's crazy numbers, isn't it? Didn't they also get an invitation to Downing Street? I think I saw on, on LinkedIn, or at least they were stood outside. Maybe one didn't take, maybe they just went and stood outside Downing Street. Just <laughs> being tourist for the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, yeah, it's crazy numbers, isn't it? When you, because again, Employment Hero are still trying to, trying to get their, their, you know, their foot in the door in the UK market. Well, they definitely deserve a seat at the table, don't they? That sort of valuation and that sort of investment opportunity. So, yeah, no, it's it's great news, and we we've, we've said enough about what they're trying to do and change the change the change philosophy of what what um, payroll is for the UK market. Not trying to race the bottom. So, hopefully, with a bit more 
money in there they can actually succeed that because it's going to be better for everyone right if we can get if we can change that philosophy and we don't do that chase to the bottom for every accounting firm out there then that's got to be better for everyone that we get a you know we we can provide a better service to our clients our clients will be happy to pay more you know it's yep. self fulfilling isn't it so yeah let's yeah. Uh, let's let's hope that they can use that money to uh to help the uk get forward a bit definitely i mean Pavel just made a really interesting comment in the comments saying, um, that sounds great, 260 million. How long do you think the positive investment atmosphere will last? You see, that's interesting because it's not been positive for a while. Like, I think right. the big products like Employment Hero are going out making good money. Even the products like Apron that have just done £12 million in funding. I think for the right products, there is a very positive investment uh, economy out there at the moment but you know we've seen products where they can't get the investment and they're closing down like connect work uh, connect four closed down because they couldn't get investment you know there's there are i think investors are less frivolous with their investment now and just because you've got software in your title somewhere or your description doesn't guarantee you the investment like it used to uh, uh, you know without really strict due diligence um, you know, I mean, Apron asked me to speak to some of their potential investors so they could get a, a customer's view on it. And the questions they were asking were pretty intense. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't very, it wasn't like the, you know, just airy fairy stuff. It was really down to the, the client pain point and how much is it relieving that pain point, et cetera, et cetera. So um yeah it's for the right softwares there is still a positive investment world out there but every software who's going for investment is having to work harder to justify and prove that they're going to get a return on that investment for the investors um so yeah um sages uh, chris downing has said sage has got a service called vat center that's free of charge to all accountants pulls through all the information from MTD VAT at HMRC and suffices it uh, surfaces it in a dashboard for each client, no matter which bookkeeping tool they use for Excel spreadsheets for filing the VAT. So, yeah, I, Sage's approach here has been fantastic. Like, I own a couple of different zero firm licenses at the moment. I can only log in and see VAT returns or even the VAT 100 report in one of those i have to have a different email address linked to each account to be able to see the vat 100 because i'm already agent somewhere else yeah. quickbooks i don't have that issue but i don't also have that central screen no, of all my clients no. so i'd say zero have got it completely wrong which you know doesn't surprise me quickbooks is almost there any you, any of my team can log in and see stuff. That's not an issue. Even if you're on different practice, even if you're on quick, different QuickBooks account, QuickBooks online accounting licenses, that's not an issue, which zero can't seem to work out. But then you've got someone like Sage who's come along and go, cool, we'll just surface all this information tied into your agent account with HMRC, regardless of where they are. And I think all softwares need to be starting to move towards a more... No, no, if we've got the information, we're going to display it for you, regardless of where you're filing it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, well done, Sage. It's definitely thank you, well Chris, done. for your weekly Sage advertising post. It's definitely Don't worry, well worry, Chris, we love you. We were more than happy for you to promote the benefits of Sage. Um, All that. Yeah, I don't think we know it well enough to be able to shout about it. So it's great that this, he's here championing it. True. But the only one caveat I would say is that that's on paper is a great solution, but really needs to be in some sort of practice management solution. That's the only thing, isn't it, when there's another place for accountants to go to to get that data. That's the one thing we're fighting at the moment. We've got all these different data points all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's and I know Sage will have a, a solution in hand one day, but at the moment it is. We've got to go to this place to go and get the data when ideally we want to be in this one place where everything's served to you right so yeah oh definitely it. and i think that's also why softwares don't like to do too much with apis because yeah. 
they could, you know, like in theory, QuickBooks has got all this data, like Sage has got all this data, Zero has got all this data. In theory, they could they could destroy the practice management market overnight with all that data in one place, along with good task management, etc. QuickBooks are trying; they're not there yet, but they've got the idea and they're making steps towards it. Um, with all the different channels of data Sage have got, it will be interesting to see what they do with practice management, if anything, or how they go about it. Because, yeah, when you've already got all these cool features, like Chris keeps telling us about all these different features, if you can pull them in all into one place, alongside Go Proposal, Go Proposal's AML tool, Sage bookkeeping, accounts, payroll, like, in theory, Ecosystem, what you're looking for is just that linchpin now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, right. Okay. I'm conscious we've got two minutes left. Did we have anything else we want to cover? Uh, Aaron, we were on the road last week. We were. Uh, in, the, in the middle of nowhere. Chelms, Chelmsford Racecourse is not... <laughs> Not central location, uh, shall we say? But yeah, we had a great day out at QuickBooks Roadshow Chelmsford uh, last week. Uh, another really well attended event. Uh, a great venue. Um, but once you'd walked underneath the racetrack to get to it, which was yeah interesting. I'd never walked under a racetrack before. Um, but yeah, um, thoughts and takeaways from QuickBooks uh, Chelmsford. Have you got any? Yeah. Very like like we said on all of them, it's been a very well attended event. I think what we personally did differently this one, which I thought was really powerful and impactful, is we got to sit down with um, um, Brian from Digital Camp, uh, Digital Rule, uh, oh, Digital Tools in a Cool World. Get that one out. Um, so we got to give feedback to them and and kind of push it from there. But yeah, these events they they definitely feel like that's the future to go. Like get into the hearts and you know, hearts and souls of the accountants by actually going on their doorstep and talking to them there and then seems to be a, a, a way yeah. forward isn't it? yeah every event we've been to so far there's always been one or two people at least i've spoken to saying the london event's great but it's a big ask to get there and to do it um i mean i'd argue if it's if it's 25 minutes on a train people in chelmsford to get to london or reading i'd argue you've got an easy life but yeah. each to their own with perceptions. Um, yeah, these big events are great, but by opening up the events and becoming roadshows, you know, they, I'm I'm sure this is the reason Sage have always done a roadshow rather than a big event, is it becomes more accessible to a larger audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, how many people turn up to the London event for QuickBooks? I don't know, but... I'd like to say that over the five events, they've probably got three or four times more people to those five events than they did to that one big event in London. So economics says you do roadshows. Yeah. I think the only selfish bit, we've said it before, is the fact that there's not that big announcement, though, is there? Not one more thing or anything like that, you know? No. But yeah, we'll, we'll find other ways to, to get those announcements out there. And, and the, the pace of development as well, I suppose, do you want it all to be waiting for one announcement in one conference, right? You want to be able to have an opportunity to talk about, you know, section, you know, release number 85 of the year or whatever we're going to have. So, yeah, no, I, I think it's uh, it's it's working well. And, yeah, can't wait for the next one's Leeds, isn't it, next week? Ne Leeds next week, yeah, my final one of the roadshow before I jet off to Cyprus for two weeks. Um but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to Leeds. Um, I did a trial mini thing at Leeds last year, um, which was great. It was a really good, uh, I think we're in the same venue again, actually. But a really good venue, really good facilities. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one next week um, as my final one before disappearing on holiday for two weeks. But um, And then you've got... Brighton after that, which is the rescheduled one due to train strikes a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, which I think 
what a great place to end a roadshow in Brighton. Like that should be an absolutely brilliant event. And to a certain degree, I am very envious that I'm not at the last one. Uh, the last one, last event of any kind of series of events is always a bit special. Like, you know, the, when it's the last show of a run of shows or something. Yeah. You know, it's a bit special, that one. It's a, you know, it's done. The the excitement and stuff is there. And, yeah, so I think you're going to be in for an absolutely brilliant show in Leeds. Uh, sorry, in Brighton. Yeah, look forward to it. Um, so, yeah. Right. Well, on that note, we will bring this episode to an end. Uh, thank you to everyone that has commented uh, in the comments. Thank you to everyone that's joined us over the last year. It's been a hell of a year, and we're really excited about what year two's got installed. So, uh, as always, if you want to uh, join us live, if you're listening back to this or watching back on this, join us live at 8.30 every Monday morning. We're on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. We're probably there with our cluster bombing effect on social medias that we do. Um, and if you're listening back to us and you've got any thoughts or anything, stick them in the comments and we will come back to you. You yeah. never know. We might even mention you next week. <clears throat> oh, here. So it's, even though she wasn't listening this time, she still had to come in and get that little comment in. So thanks for that, Kirsty. <laughs> even though she's got FOMO. Yep. Uh, brilliant. Okay. So, uh, Aaron, what have you got on this week? I'm off to Manchester as soon as this finishes. So, yeah, I'm off to Manchester Brewdog uh, Hotel again, which um, is, uh, oh, is you, hard you, life. Hard life. If Brewdog Manchester was a different country, you'd have temporary <laughs> citizenship, wouldn't you? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But I'm going to um, another filming event, so I'm going to go and film for Kaplan tomorrow, so that'll be a different experience, won't it, all around? Yep. Um, and then after that, it's just a week of head down to get stuff done, because the week after um, is, like I said, lead, so it's going to be a, a busy old week, I think. So, yeah, yep, fun. definitely is. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We will see you all next week. So goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye for me. See you, everyone. Goodbye.